Spider-Man Homecoming. If you didn't get it from the title, Spider-Man comes home to the Marvel Universe. And it's not an origin story because people already know how he fucking got his powers. We've already gotten five movies of the same shit since 2002. It stars Tom Holland as Peter Parker just after Civil War, balancing his life as a student and as the Spider-Man while uncovering a gun-running scheme by Adrian Toomes, the Vulture. Will Spider-Man succeed? Of course he will! He's confirmed for Infinity War! I'd never have dreamed that I'd ever be in one of these movies, let alone playing Spider-Man. The movie was fun. It was also really funny. It had that spectacular Spider-Man vibe, which I like so much. We have a teenage Spider-Man that has a learning curve. And for most of the movie, he, he's, a, he's a failure. <laughs> it seems that the villain is always one step ahead of him. And it's only after he's gone through the whole movie and grew as a person that he actually manages to fight and defeat him. Spider-Man is my favorite hero. I think he's great because he's really just a guy. He's not ultra-rich. His power set isn't broken. But he's trying to do good despite that, despite the real-life problems he faces. He looks out for the little guy. He takes the time to help out an old lady asking for directions. He helps someone whose bike was being stolen. He's wide-eyed, innocent, and needs a voice changer to interrogate Childish Gambino to show that he has the big cojones. You gotta get better at this part of the job. I don't understand. Yeah. I'm intimidated. I like that it also shows the consequences of such a lifestyle. Peter's not really happy as a student because he wants to do Spider-Man stuff. And when he does get a break, he chooses to do the right thing. So it's like he's stuck in that I gotta be a hero thing. But the Spider-Man, he's not really 100% happy either. He feels like he's not being taken seriously. And Tom Holland really captures that down-on-his-luck underdog vibe that is full of snark but is still trying to do the right thing. The main villain was played fantastically by Michael Keaton. I found it a really interesting approach to what you all want to call a villain. You don't understand how the world works. The Vulture he does corrupt things in order to fight what he sees as corruption. He thinks to himself, when they all have theirs, where's mine? The first few scenes of the movie is about how he became a bad guy. And you get him. He got a contract from the government, but they took it away from him because they had a whole other department to take care of cleaning up the Avengers, alien technology, all that shit. And he felt really screwed. He actually put himself out there and he got dealt a bad hand. I sympathize with him. The scale of this movie is smaller than the most recent Marvel one we have. It's neighborhood size. Peter helps the little guy. He's the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Vulture is also small scale. He's your friendly neighborhood high-tech robber guy. It's not a big grand Avengers event with a universal ending threat. Speaking of the Avengers, Iron Man is important but he doesn't take up too much screen time. This is Spider-Man's movie, you fuck. This isn't Iron Man 4, okay? The action scenes were alright. The standout ones are near the end of the film, but the climactic battle at the end is not as satisfying as I would have liked. I'll get to that. The side characters were endearing. Well, at least Ned Leeds was. They stopped. Maryland? What's there? Also, the Michelle character. Michelle was snarky, she had presence, and I appreciate that. Can't believe you guys are at this lame party. But you're here too. Am I? What's annoying is that it was probably by design that she's likable, and I'll get to that. I didn't feel any connection with Liz Allen though, which is funny because she's kind of the love interest of Peter Parker, but she's more of like a thing he's aiming for rather than a person. It's like this. He likes her because she's hot. That's the impression I got. Which is accurate if you're in high school, I guess. Aunt May wasn't also a big presence in the movie. Flash was annoying. Remember the time when the bullies were bullies and it was sort of justified to punch them in the face because they were beating you up? Here, he, he's a guy that thinks he's such tough shit when he's just insulting people with words. It just comes across as pathetic. All in all, Spider-Man was good. Enjoyable. If you got money to spend, I think it's worth a watch. So that's it. What, we some kind of suicide squad? Tom Holland has a great moment. Vulture trapped him under some rubble. And there was this big wall that's just smooshing him. It's a shout out to this issue of Spider-Man, which they also shouted out in Spectacular Spider-Man. And it's a great character moment in all those versions because it's when he steps up. Tom Holland was like crying out, Hey, I'm trapped here! 
I'm just a kid, you know? And he was really sobbing. It was like, he said, it actually might die. And he's scared. He's genuinely scared. And then there's this puddle forming because water came down for some reason. And then he looks at it and he remembers that he's supposed to be the hero. And he grabs his balls and gets the wall off of him. It's such a good character in such a well-acted scene. The twist is that the vulture is Liz's dad. This was a good twist because it was foreshadowed. You should leave hints, you know, because if you set it up and there's a payoff, it, it, it'll work. The hints are like Tomb shows in the intro that he had a drawing of his kid. It's a great drawing and they were like, okay, boss, yeah, whatever. And when the goons were in the school of Peter searching for something, one of them goes, wouldn't the boss be surprised if he finds out where we are? And I thought, why the fuck would he be surprised? And then at the end, I go, oh. One of the theater goers actually went, oh my god, when when the dad was shown. The climactic battle didn't feel climactic. Spider-Man manages to stop the vulture. But after that, the vulture is still alive. He's mad. He just beats Spider-Man up. And the only reason Spider-Man won was because the wings were really damaged and it was about to explode. So Spider-Man saves tombs. And after he was saved, he just kind of lies down there and says, Yep, I'm, I'm defeated. Yep, this is a good way to end it. I guess it's a hero thing, but I wanted the Spider-Man to go all out and beat him the fuck out. <laughs> I didn't go, hell yeah! I went, yay! You're a hero, though. They also made Michelle MJ. When this happened, I was really surprised. I was more surprised then than with the Michael Keaton moment. One of my viewers actually mentioned this, but I went, they wouldn't do that. She she goes, my friends call me MJ. And, and then I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, is Are you really MJ now then? Is that what this means? Or are you just some other person who happens to call herself MJ? Is this going to be another Hermione moment with the play where they made Hermione black? And people were like, hey, what are you doing? And then J.K. Rowling clarified the whole shit. It was mildly annoying what they did, but the character was so fun. At the very least, I'm gonna go, let's wait and see what they're gonna do with the character, actually. That's it, guys. JJ coming ASAP. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And wait for the end credits, because the end credits really fucking great.